guys, please forgive me. I told you if I'm not here, it's because I am booked and busy. So booked and busy that today, like I literally left set and came right home and started to film my reviews because I was going to wash my hair because like if you if you notice my hair is not doing its natural gloriousness but um, they put some crazy stuff in my hair I still have like on my uh, makeup from set so I'm like greasy and sticky but I wanted to get this up to you as soon as possible because I know you guys have been checking in on me and I totally appreciate it but guys seriously if I'm not here it's only because of that because I love doing this I love the fact that y'all love me and y'all keep on tuning into me even to cuss me out in love I still appreciate it and so I just want to be consistent with this but you know I'm getting booked and busy I'm living my dream it feels good but I also hate that I um, missed these reviews with you so I wanted to get this up to you as soon as possible so without further ado let's get in to this review so first of all I was already cringing from the previews of this episode like with Rue I don't know who Rue was yelling at but it was just like I didn't even want to press play like I was like oh my gosh am I going to see some ugliness that I told y'all I hate seeing on this show because I just I don't know I just I want this to be a positive experience uh for the queens because I know that they live in a hell that I, as a woman, as a straight woman, could not understand. I could only understand certain things, like as a black woman, that kind of discrimination. But I can't, like, I can feel, but it's so different when you're living in that nightmare. So I always like to keep this very nice and rosy and positive. And I just want the queens to just laugh and have a good time. So when I saw that it was getting a little, that from the previews, I was just like, ooh. I don't want to watch, but I knew you was going to cuss me out and snatch my what edges. So I was like, let me do this for these people because I don't feel like it. Y'all be knocking and bucking in them comment section. I'm going to get y'all together in love. Miss Vanjie. Eh, Miss Vanjie. I'm so happy for her. One episode and she has taken over the world. That's how you do it. That's how you make your presence known. And I guarantee you we're going to see her on All Stars 3. Like, how can we not? Oh, no, not 3. Let's not talk about that nightmare. Let's forget that one. But I think we're going to see her on 4. I think we're going to see her on 4. I think we're going to see Monique Hart on 4. We definitely should see Monet Exchange. I think that's the only three people I think we'll see from this season. Dusty Ray Bottoms is a wild card. But I think those will be the only queens that we'll see from this season. Because I don't think we as viewers are done with their story. You know, from a producer perspective, I would want to bring them on so you guys could see more of what they're able and capable of doing. Especially now, knowing the ins and outs of this show. Wait, I got ahead of myself. Let's talk about these fashions. Real quick, I liked everybody. I liked everybody. I felt that the garments that the queens were wearing fit their drag except for calorie and except for yuha because i don't i've seen yuha in person perform in person once and it was very glam very very glam and then throughout the season it was very very glam she never gave this i know she's a girl from the ring right but it's just i i don't know I would expect something like that from Milk, but not Yuha from the drag that I've seen from her. And that just that's just in what I know. But I don't feel like she's ever presented that she was that kind of queen that would do stuff like that. And if that was her drag, in my opinion, of what I've seen, then I'd be fine with it. But I'm like, you know, you were giving me glam at, at your show. You're giving me glam on this season, and then you show up as the ring. But you're not Milk. And maybe she is, but I'm just saying, I didn't I didn't see that from what she presented on the show. So that was the only thing. And Calorie, I, I just felt like everybody was so polished. And even the Vixen, that wig, <gasps> uh, was so polished. And then you got Calorie with like the Etch-a-Sketch eyebrows. I don't know. I was just like, ooh. They didn't do it for me. I love Monique. I felt like that fit her. It was very comical. She, she, she OD'd me with the popcorn though. But I feel like it, it just it just really fit her. I felt like Asia, that's who she was. That's who Asia is, you know what I mean? Dynasty queen. Um, uh, Aquaria, I would have wanted more. I liked it. I felt like it was great for a challenge, but I'm like, this is a reunion. I want to see something a little bit more instead of like soccer mom on a safari trip. 
eh, but you know, it was cute. It was cute, but I'm like, mm, Dusty is Dusty. I, that That's what Dusty will wear. Monet, can I just be real here? Monet gives me real life fish. Like Monet gives me a black woman. <laughs> I, I never see a drag queen with Monet. I see a sister. You know what I mean? Like I just see a woman. I see a woman. So when I look at Monet, I'm never, I'm, I never see drag. <laughs> I'm like, this is a sister. Your hair is cute, girl. I like your outfit. You know what I mean? Like she had on a cute little homecoming outfit, but I just, I don't, I didn't see drag queen. I saw a sister look at her Sunday best. Eureka look gorgeous. Cameron, was it, was the hair, was it like a dread wig? I don't, I don't know. But Cameron's makeup always looks great. I just felt like this outfit gave me um, that last outfit that she wore when um, she was good Cameron and bad Cameron. It was too reminiscent of a drag that wasn't successful, so I wasn't feeling it. But still, it, everybody was still better than uh, Calorie and uh, Yuha, in my opinion. Let me talk about the other queens as well, because I was just like, I still have opinions about them, and I don't want you to be like, well, what about the other ones? <laughs> Let me stop. That's not all they all, but it's one specific one who, ooh! Everything does not have to, every uh, word you say does not have to end with an exclamation mark because to me, that's letting me know that you want to fight. And that's probably not what you're, what you're giving off. You know, that's probably not how you're typing it. But when you put an exclamation mark, I'm just like, oh, you ready to fight. Anyway, Blair is another one. Just gives me real fish. Real fish. Like Blair's a woman. I just see a woman. I don't really see drag. Eureka look gorgeous. She gave me like uh, a Candyland queen. Like, I felt like I could see her in, like, some kind of Disney movie. You know what I mean? Like, some type of Disney movie or cartoon. It was very, it was very, I didn't see comedy as much as I saw, like, cartoon. It was good. I don't know. I just liked it. I loved her jewels. I loved her hair. Um, Miss Cracker. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And she knew it. She was sitting there like, mm gorgeous i loved it vanji of course looked great mayhem mayhem was beautiful in the face i didn't like the the wig was great i wish it was darker because i feel like especially with her contour and her highlighting the wig matched too much matched too close to um mayhem skin and it just I felt like it was washed out in certain places where it should have been blocked out. So if it was just like a smidge darker, even red, I could have rocked with it. But because it was so light, I was just like, it's, ugh, it's, it's bouncing off. It, it wasn't balancing for me. Oh, let's talk about Vanjie trying to do a song with Little Kim. Y'all, we not ready. That's, I, I'm, I don't know what kind of song it would be. I'm ready for it. I just want it. I, wa I wanted to drop this summer so it could be the song of the summer. I need that. When she mentioned that, I was just like, oh, y'all got to make that happen. Kim, Kim, this is your community, sis. Get on it. Please drop a song with Angie this summer. Come on. We almost into July. At least drop it in August so we can celebrate all the way into at least the beginning of October. Because it's still summer here. And I like to say that Monique Hart was ready. She was sitting on Tim this whole reunion. And she was ready for Rue. When Rue tried to come at her for that wig falling off, she was unapologetic about it. She was like, it happens. I was like, ooh, okay. You know what? I've noticed a lot of queens this season have had it with RuPaul. And I don't know how I feel about that. Like a part of me is just like, okay, stand up for yourself. And then another part of me is just like, this is RuPaul. Give respect, honey, where respect is due. I don't know. What do y'all think? Cause a lot of y'all was just like, you're gonna hate Ru. And I just, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't agree with some things, but I'm still team Ru. Let's talk about it. Cause I already feel, I already feel the comments. Let's talk about it. We gonna get there. Let's go. And speaking of controversy, y'all can come for me to the brown cow giraffes come home. I still 1000% believe that Cameron should have went home over Miss Cracker. I do not think that that lip sync was worthy of her staying. Now, to have this whole explanation about her being sexy and, you know, Miss Cracker being funny was par partially the reason why she stayed made absolutely no sense to me. Any way you interpret a song is how you should go 
with it. Miss Cracker is a comedy queen, so she did it. Cameron is a look, so that's how she did her lip sync. I maybe it's because I'm into comedy. I think that uh, Miss Cracker did better, but Cameron did the same old tired moves that she has done before that wowed us in the beginning. But now that we know what you're going to do, we're just like, okay, a side split. Yay! We're not gagging like we did when you first did it. So I still believe that Miss Cracker should uh, be in the top four. That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. So I ride with Vixen, and I still do, because I think the whole black girl magic, her whole concept, I've seen clips of the show, it's amazing. I love what she's doing in the drag community. I love the conversation that she brought up on the show that is very, very important. Um, but let's be real, since she was being messy with Aquaria, Miss Cracker, like to just, you know, my thing is, I'll respect you more if you just own up to it. And I feel like tonight, there were certain things that Vic, that the Vixen would not own up to because it made her look a certain way. And so she was trying to uh, change that narrative. Completely understand that, right? But let's be real here. You were being messy, even in your mannerisms and your behavior with how you was dealing with it. No, this is what you said. This is messy mannerisms, okay? How do I know it? Because that's what I do when I'm being messy. You were being messy. You were being messy with the Aquaria and Cracker situation. You wanted to bring that up and you didn't look good in the situation because everybody turned to you and was just like, why don't you mind your business? So you tried to defend your way out of it because you didn't like how you looked on TV. But I think it would have went over better if the Vixen was just like, well, you know, in that moment I was. It would have went over so much better if she just owned up to it. But the fact that she was denying it and then trying to turn it into something else that it wasn't, come on. Everybody got their messy moments. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just want to get your popcorn. And if it ain't going, then you you know you make it happen. Then you sit back and get your popcorn. That's what you were doing. You were creating good TV. Thank you. Be honest. Everybody is telling me how to react, but nobody's telling her how to act now that's a word and i believe that i believe it 1000 percent that's what happened with the vixen everybody was telling her how to react to eureka nobody was checking eureka nobody like no like as especially now that the queens are saying all of these things about eureka after the show i kind of wish that they would have saved their comments for after the show and telling it to you know, audiences when they were at watch parties. I kind of wish they would have saved that conversation or kept it to themselves and did it on the show. So Vixen would not have looked like an idiot because now they're all coming out like, Eureka was doing this and Eureka was doing that. She was producing the show. Okay, if you saw that, you should have spoke up. Why am I trying speaking up? Because you were producing yourself on the show as well. Like you can't get mad at Eureka for doing what you were doing and now you want to defend Vixen after the fact because she wasn't producing certain things although she produced that drama in the beginning between Aquaria and Cracker. At least you brought up that mess. Be honest. So I got to ride with the Vixen on this one because everybody was coming to her because they wanted to look like the nice queen or the queen with some sense or the queen trying to bring in unity but nobody ever was just like Eureka you're doing too much. Stop it. But now y'all got all this y'all got all this mouth after the show. I don't like that. And now we get the real tea. I told you, Eureka was producing the show. She was producing that conflict between her and the Vixen and the Vixen was not having it. Eureka was trying to get a producer credit and the Vixen was not playing along. Ah, see, this is the thing, right? On one hand, it's show business. On the other hand, it's just like, this is somebody's real life. So I get that the Vixen did not want to play along with Eureka. And I, I totally believe that Eureka told her, told the Vixen, so how do you want to make up on that? Like, I don't know. It's like the part, the, the producing part of me is just like, well, this is how you make a show, especially a reality TV show. But then I feel for the Vixen because she wasn't in on it and she knew that things were happening and she was speaking out on what was actually on the truth of what was actually happening but she was speaking out against someone who was well versed in the game and was playing the game so good that even the truth 
was not penetrating. You know what I mean? And I just feel bad. I'm like, dang, Vixen. Like a part of me wanted her to play along or, you know, craft your own kind of commercial for this show. Because that's what it is. I always say this. Reality TV is an hour long or half an hour. However long your show, your reality TV show is, that is that time is a commercial for your brand. And Eureka was doing a commercial for her brand. And the Vixen was just experiencing this for what it is. And by how she acted uh, towards Rue and the issues that they got into um, on this reunion, I don't think that she is going to be on All Stars. Um, I would love for her to be on it. Maybe not this season. But I think maybe two or three seasons down the line, I would love to see the Vixen on there. Not when she's playing the game, because I don't. When I say playing the game, I don't mean you have to sacrifice your soul. I mean that you have to, if you're going to take a job, make it work for you. That's what I mean. And I don't think that Vic, the Vixen fully maximized this opportunity for what it was. I will say that I think she was able to accomplish some things. But looking at it from a showbiz perspective, I wish she would have handled things differently not how you would handle things in real life because you're on reality tv and you are giving these people just blurbs of your life and blurbs of your response and blurbs of your personality you want to put your best foot forward because they're going to edit it any way they can and you want to make sure they are only able to edit you in a certain light and that's what eureka was doing she was producing her scenes so that she could, so that her edits would turn out the way she was pleased with. And that's just because she knows how it goes and the Vixen wasn't aware of that and we had this kind of combobbled relationship and uh, man, unfortunate, unfortunate. Because I can understand both sides. Ugh, what do y'all think? What do I'm, I'm so conflicted because I don't. I don't, I'm in the middle. I really, really am because I get it. Like I'm, I'm like, all right, Eureka, produce the show. And then I'm like, what well, the Vixen is being the sacrificial lamb for it because she won't play along. What are you gonna do? A show business. So well, you guys may disagree and that's okay, but keep it cute. Keep it cute. I personally feel like Rue was being partial in the Vixen and Eureka situation. And I think that the Vixen wasn't happy with the results of Rue being partial. And it kind of looked to me like, I'm just gonna use my mom as an example. Like when me and my sisters are in any kind of, like it could be me and my sisters or it could be my sisters going at each other. And my mom comes in trying to be partial. Nobody's ever satisfied because you want, you know, you want your mom to take your side and, you know, chastise your sister. But your sister wants your mom to take her side and chastise you. But that is not the position that a parent will take. You know, a parent will address the problematic behaviors in both children and try to come to a conclusion. And I think that's what Rue was doing, at least that's how I saw it. And the Vixen was just not happy with the outcome. So she responded in a way of hurt. Like everything was coming out and it, I could feel it. Like anybody who was watching the show, you could feel her hurt, you could feel her pain, you could feel her disappointment. And it became very uncomfortable because I felt bad for her because I felt like Vic, the Vixen was very open and honest and I feel like all of the queens were. But I just feel like she wasn't in on the producing of the scenes like a lot of the other queens uh, were. Like I think the a lot of the queens knew that this could really change their life and I think the Vixen knew that as well. I don't think she knew how to do it. And some seasoned queens got on that show and some queens who are um, familiar with pageants and doing all of, you know, uh, pleasing the people knew how to go about it and the Vixen didn't. And so it's just, just this fight. It's this fight of like production and reality and it's not working. And uh, it's uncomfortable. It really is uncomfortable to watch. And with that being uncomfortable to watch, I can only imagine what it felt like for the Vixen because she got up and walked away. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. But uh, later on in her life, she said that she felt like she did what she came to do. She thanked her fans and she didn't feel like 
it was going to go the conversation back and forth with her and Rue. She said she didn't feel like it was going to go anywhere and that it was going to be positive. And she's just like, I just wanted to have a good time and clear the air. And that wasn't what happened. However, again, production, you know, looking at the producer aspect of it, you had some really, you know, uh, hot button scenes, you know, the Vixen and it had to be talked about. You know, this is the reunion, so we want to talk about those moments. And unfortunately, you had a lot of spicy moments. So nobody's going to talk about all the positive times because although they may have been filmed, they did not they did not make the cut. And this is what we got of you, so it had to be discussed. And I wish she would have stayed. I really, really do because it just didn't bode well for her to leave that situation when they're talking about um, some, I was going to say incriminating, but some, some scenes that just did not show her in the best of light. And I would have loved for her to defend that, but she was done. You know what I mean? She was just like, nah, that's okay. I'm out. And it's unfortunate because again, I'm not saying she has to bow down to RuPaul, but I'm just like, girl, you can make this into such a better situation for you. Like if the Vixen wanted to, she could come in and own this whole whole reunion like she could have owned that whole season but I just felt she's just very sensitive and she got up in the feelings and it became more about how I'm feeling than it did about the business and I wish she would have been more business than more emotional and um so easily her I, I I wish her armor wasn't so easily penetrated because I think she would have done a lot better on this season but the girl did make the season. She has some really important moments, uh, it being messy or not. She brought up a really important uh, topics and conversations within not just the LGBT community, just uh, America period as a whole, uh, different cultures and just different people living amongst each other and just dealing with the, those issues. She brought up a lot of stuff that was very, very important. And I wish she would have stayed there and discussed those things in a way in which she can handle. But she couldn't handle it, so she got up. I can't rock with it, but I understand. And then we get to Asia. I get her being upset. I get her writing for her friend. But in that moment, you also have to respect RuPaul who opened this door, who got you to where you are in this moment, on this show, on this network. You are let's be real you are a man a grown black man in a dress and makeup you are on a mainstream straight network putting out your art to millions of people your talent got you in the door but rupaul created the house in which that door was put on for you to walk through and get to this point so you just gotta give honor where honor is due you gotta respect the architect i'm not saying be walked over i'm not saying be disrespected but i'm saying at least hear rupaul out but asia was in her feelings and just she felt bad she it's, she made a good point she's like during pride we let one of our sisters walk out but then you hear it from the vixen and she was like the producers told her to stay but she said it was too late she had already started taking off stuff and that's why she didn't stay it sounded like to me that she did want somebody to go after her and i was just like asia if you feel this way why didn't you go after her why did you just sit there and get your moment everybody's producing scenes baby everybody's producing scenes but the vixen the vixen is the only one not producing scenes people are producing scenes about her <sighs> sis do better in all stars please so then we get to the part of the reunion where we went from fighting to now everybody is crying because dusty got my heart uh monique heart got my heart and uh monet got my heart because this is the point where i was just like in tears Rue asked Dusty about just her family situation and, you know, where they were at. And she was just like, they respect me and we respect each other, but not as humans. What? It's like, we don't talk about it. We don't deal with it. It's just something that is just never discussed. And then Rue was just like, but you have your chosen family. Is that enough? <sighs> and then Dusty just like wells up. And, uh, guys... 
man. She was just like, I, I love my chosen family. They're more than enough. But, you know, at the end of the day, you want your blood. You want your blood to love and accept you. And Dusty doesn't have that. That... Child. And then we get to Monique, who was crying about her situation with her family. And I just... Uh, and then just trying to deal with the fact that she still has like this strong relationship with the Lord that she had growing up and then trying to reconcile being like being this Christian, having these beliefs, but being free in drag and then inspiring other, ah, uh, whoo, we should have started here because I couldn't, y'all can't take me from all that mess to, to this sweet moment. We should have started at the sweet. Can I just say, y'all were all telling me that this reunion was going to be messy. Nobody mentioned that I was going to be a ball of tears. Thanks a lot guys for not prepping me for what I was about to watch. You know what gets me? We pay straight men, at least the entertainment industry, and you know, people who watch their movies and films and uh, TV shows or whatever they do. We pay straight men millions of dollars to dress in drag. But let a gay man put on a wig, some pumps, some highlights, some you know, anything that is the essence of a woman and they are literally killed for it. Like, that's insane. That is insane. It's like complete irony like gay men cannot do what straight men can do because a straight dude can literally do that and he'll get a tv show he'll get a multi-picture deal he'll get paid millions of dollars he'll be held as a comedic genius a gay guy does it it's an abomination you're you're getting murdered especially if you're black you're getting murdered in the streets and nobody is doing anything about it insane so um I forgot that Cameron was there until we got to the toot or boot section. <laughs> I was like, oh, Cameron, hey. Cameron like barely said anything in this reunion. Y'all could call it shade. Y'all could say whatever y'all want. But I, there are receipts for people's opinions about Cameron just not being present. I get that you are a quiet person and you are to yourself. That is fine. If that is who you are, Reality TV is not for you. This is a show that is created to entertain people. If you are not doing that, you can't just think that you're gonna skate by. Cameron, a great drag queen. Maybe reality TV is not for her. No shade, just tea. I, I guarantee you, Rue is going to wear that sponge dress that Monet Exchange gave him on uh, season, what, season 11. I guarantee you, we are going to see that moment. We are going to get our whole lives because how can you not? The sponge dress was just as iconic as Miss Vanjie. It's very now, it's important. And Rue, if you're smart, you'll bring it back. I can't wait to see that sponge dress on season 11. You know what, if I don't get a guest spot on that show, which I'm sure I will, I better get a producing credit. Cause I, listen, I'm giving some great notes on this show. I know what I'm talking about. Say whoa. Okay, I knew that when Asia said that Miss Cracker was not a star, I knew it hurt her. It was very evident because it's still something that Miss Cracker talks about, right? But when Miss Cracker was going on and on about how she couldn't get out of bed, she was so depressed just by that comment alone, I was like, sis, grow up, like get it together. Then she explained it a bit more and I was like, okay, I see what happened here. Miss Cracker was already thinking that about herself before she got on this show. She was already intimidated by the resume of the other queens. So for Asia to say that, that she wasn't a star, she tapped into something that Miss Cracker was already dealing with and it just broke her down. And although Asia didn't know that she is responsible for the horrible words that she let, that she let leave her mouth, that impacted Miss Cracker that way. So I totally understand where she was coming from because I've had to deal with things like that as well. You know, we all have, when you have these insecurities that somebody calls it out, whether they meant to or not, it's just like, ugh, it's, it just, it really hurts you, hurts you deeply. So I get where she was coming from, but I'm glad they squashed it and I'm glad they moved on. And Miss Cracker, sweetie, you are a star. That's why we stand for you even though you cut. Cause you a star and we see it. One star to another, you better work. Okay, so is Cameron playing the game or not? Because I was confused, and I still kind of am, confused about 
what just transpired. So Cameron was just like, oh, I'm a very quiet person. I stick to myself. That's just who I am. And then she was just like, I was also intimidated and very nervous because I wasn't actively performing drag like the other queens. So I was intimidated by people who were already well seasoned in this and I was competing against them. Made so much sense to me. I got it. I wish, I'm not saying that she didn't discuss it on the season. I'm just saying she probably did and it was cut. Because that would have been very great to know because then I could understand why Cameron was holding back from some things other than her just being reserved, right? But then as she's saying that the other queens are chiming in like, oh no, honey, that's who you are. No, you were playing the game. You were um, very unbothered by us in our presence. You didn't want anything to do with us. Then Dusty is like, you walked right by me. And if I don't sit on your lap and say hi to you, you won't say hi to me. It's like, you're too good for the other queens. And the other queens were saying that Cameron was just like, she had thoughts and ideas about people, but she wouldn't say them on camera because she didn't want to because she didn't want to come off shady. So then I'm like, are you producing your scenes as well? Hey, I'm not hating on that. That's what you need to do on reality TV. But there were so many other people who were clueless about that. And then watching it back, they're just like, oh, wait, you were playing the game. So what do you guys think? Was Cameron playing the game this whole time? Like, was she producing her scenes and crafting this image of herself, which I'm not hating against? Or was she being honest with just being intimidated and scared and, you know, just the awkward introverted kind of person. So that's why it's very hard for people to read her or she's coming off a certain way because she's just very reserved or nervous or intimidated in communities or, you know, communion with people who are, is it communion? Or just being amongst people who are, in her eyes, legendary. Which one do you think? I go back and forth when I think about things. I really do. I'm like, oh, you playing the game, sis. Work. And then I'm like, oh, no. You're just awkward and odd. I understand. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. The library is open. I'm good at catchphrases. Who are you again? Wig, okay? My my natural hair wig lifted off the ground when um when Vanjie said that to Calorie. And Calorie's feelings were like literally hurt because she was trying to say that the chick that sent you how that chick honey, it didn't land. It didn't land. Everybody fell on the floor when Vanjie made that comment about you, which is why I am certain that she is going to be on All Stars 4. She's so quick with it. I can't wait to see. This All Stars forecast, I cannot wait to see it because I'm hoping that they won't pull that queen, you know, voting foolishness again because we hated that. So I'm hoping that the producers listen and go a different route, but who knows? You know what? Maybe they're not filming. Oh, you know what? I don't know what we're going to see All Stars for. Do y'all think we'll see it next? Because I know that currently Rue was filming 11. How I know that? I know people working on the show. So I don't know. Hmm. I hope we get All Stars 4 soon. I would love to get All Stars before the next season of Drag Race. Uh, what do y'all think? Again, let me know in the comment section below. You can't get next to Cameron unless you pay $50 for a meet and greet. As someone who was at DragCon, that's true. And then we get to the end and Rue was asking the queens who they think uh, should win. And if it's up to the queens, Asia is taking this crown. But I think they were all saying it out of seniority. But I feel like Aquaria deserves it. And I think that she actually took the crown. But again, I'm staying off of social media because I do not want to have it spoiled for me. So um, I'm actually going to get off of here and edit this review and uh, try to put it up for you tonight. So that uh, in the morning, Saturday morning, as you're getting your, you know, weekend breakfast, you can watch my review. And then tomorrow, I'll watch the reunion. I'll do a live of that. Right now, I just took notes from the reunion. But I'll do a live um, reaction of the, reaction slash review, like my other format, um, of uh, the finale tomorrow. Because right now, guys, I'm tired. I, it, it's been a long day. I could go another hour, but I won't because I want to give you my best. And right now, it's time for me to wash my hair, get this set makeup off because it's thick and it's getting to me at this point, and get some rest, okay? I hope that's all right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow for the reunion. No, for the finale. See, I'm tired. I'll see you tomorrow for the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race. Bye, guys.